the company that sees everything. Palantir isn't just a software company, it's the tech version of a military contractor wrapped in Silicon Valley drip. It's part CIA brainchild, part Reddit meme stock, part data oracle for the global elite. And it might be one of the most important and misunderstood companies in the entire AI arms race. While Google was figuring out how to make ads irresistible, Palantir was figuring out how to kill terrorists with data. While Facebook was inventing Farmville crack for your attention span, Palantir was helping the Pentagon track insurgents across Afghanistan. And while TikTok was teaching teens to lip sync for clout, Palantir was quietly building the operating system for the modern battlefield. So, what is Palantir? Why are they exploding in value? And should we be worried or investing? Let's lift the digital curtain. Built for war, sold like software. Palantir was born in the fire of post 9-11 paranoia. Founded in 2003 by Peter Thiel, Alex Karp, and a few PayPal alums, it launched with CIA money and an emission. Take the tech PayPal used to detect fraud and use it to find terrorists. This wasn't Silicon Valley as usual. Palantir didn't start with an app. It started with insurgency data. It embedded engineers inside military units. It built tools to predict ambushes and IED threats using battlefield surveillance, comms logs and good old-fashioned human pattern recognition amplified by code. The software didn't replace people. It empowered them. This was about augmentation, not automation. Analysts stayed in the loop. Palantir just made their insights faster, sharper, deadlier, from black ops to public markets. For its first decade, Palantir stayed in the shadows. Government work, defense secrecy, no glitzy product launches. But by 2010, it couldn't stay hidden. Vice President Joe Biden credited Palantir with uncovering waste in stimulus spending. Soon its software was everywhere. The CIA, the NSA, the FBI, and multiple military branches. In 2020, they finally went public but didn't do an IPO like the rest of the tech herd. They did a direct listing, essentially saying, we're not asking for approval, just recognition. And the market paid attention. The ticker PLTR became a magnet for Reddit traders, defense nerds, and anyone chasing the AI boom. But the real story wasn't the stock chart. It was what the company actually does. The software that powers Empire Palantir has three main platforms, and each one sounds like it came from a Bond villain's pitch deck. First, Gotham. This is the defense beast. It ingests everything. Surveillance video, battlefield intel, satellite feeds, intercepted signals, and turns it into threat maps, insurgent networks, and real-time mission intelligence. It's used in war zones, by special forces, and in classified ops, where mistakes mean body bags. Second, Foundry. This is Gotham's business sibling, it helps corporations unify messy, siloed data from spreadsheets to sensors and make smarter decisions in real time. Foundry is like having a digital COO that never sleeps. Airbus uses it to manage aircraft production. BP uses it to model oil fields in 3D and test drilling strategies virtually. United Airlines, General Mills, and even hospitals use it to run operations more efficiently. Third, Apollo. This is the under the hood wizard. Apollo ensures both Gotham and Foundry stay updated and secure across wildly different environments, from military bases to corporate clouds to classified government service. And now they've added a new weapon to the arsenal, AI, war, and the art of prediction. In 2023, Palantir dropped its latest ace, the artificial intelligence platform or AIP. Think of it as ChatGPT with military clearance. Unlike consumer AI that trawls the open internet, AIP runs entirely on private secure data sets, the kind governments and corporations don't want leaving the building. It's designed to plug into your most sensitive systems and let users ask complex natural language questions about real-time data. Imagine a military commander asking, which enemy units are likely to hit our supply lines in the next 48 hours? Palantir's AI chews on satellite imagery, troop movements, logistics reports, and historical attack patterns, and spits out a threat map. No Google search required. Now swap the general for a CEO. What are the top three risks to our supply chain this quarter? 
and the AI responds with predictive simulations based on the company's own ERP data, vendor contracts, shipping lanes, all cross-referenced and ranked. This is predictive analytics on steroids, not just visualizing your data, but helping you act on it fast. It's not just fancy software. This is infrastructure for decision-making at national scale, a digital brain plugged into the nerve centers of war rooms, boardrooms, and government agencies. Clients you know, missions you don't. Palantir isn't selling cheap SaaS subscriptions, it's selling multi-year, multi-million dollar commitments, government deals, long-term deployments, embedded engineers. This stuff is sticky. Once it's in, it's not coming out. Roughly 55% of Palantir's revenue comes from government contracts. The other 45%, that's growing fast, driven by private sector giants who want Palantir's crystal ball. During the pandemic, the UK's National Health Service used Foundry to orchestrate its entire vaccine rollout. In the US, agencies used Palantir to track infection rates, hospital capacity, and logistics. Controversial? You bet. Effective? Absolutely. BP uses Palantir to create digital twins of its oil fields. Airbus uses it to manage production lines. Tampa General Hospital runs it to optimize patient care. Pickleball tournaments? Maybe not yet, but don't count them out. And then there's the defense stuff. Project Maven, AI for military drones, Army Vantage, Battlefield Data Fusion, Titan, the first AI-defined military vehicle built to cut soldier workloads and fire faster, smarter, and farther. If it goes boom, Palantir might be behind the scenes, making sure it hits the right target. A new kind of defense contractor. Here's where things get spicy. Palantir isn't Lockheed Martin. It doesn't build jets or missiles, but it's carving out a whole new lane in the military industrial complex, software. Traditionally, defense was all about hardware. Now, data is the new weapon. And Palantir wants to be the operating system of modern warfare. That's disruptive and a little unsettling. Because this isn't just about beating Boeing on a bid. It's about redefining what military tech even means. Instead of iron and steel, it's algorithms and dashboards. And while Lockheed execs keep quiet and cash their checks, Palantir's CEO, Alex Karp, is out here giving TED Talk energy about Western values, digital war, and dominating adversaries with data. Some call it inspiring, others, creepy, meme stock, military mindset. Now let's talk money and memes. Palantir didn't just get government attention, it got Reddit attention. After going public in 2020, retail investors piled in like it was the next Tesla, and why not? The company was mysterious, had government contracts, and a CEO who looked like a sorcerer and talked like a war prophet. Between 2020 and 2024, Palantir's stock rollercoastered from $10 to nearly $40, then back to Earth, then to the moon again, peaking with a $250 billion market cap. For a moment, it was worth more than IBM and fighting for a seat at the same table as Cisco and AT&T. Retail traders on RPLTR started calling CEO Alex Karp Daddy Carp, and Carp fully leaned in. He doesn't do boring earnings calls. He drops lines like, I love the idea of spraying fentanyl-laced urine on short sellers, or I think in domination, not win-lose. This guy isn't pitching ad software. He's pitching Palantir as the savior of Western civilization, and meme lords are eating it up. But behind the Reddit hype is a real financial shift. In 2023, Palantir posted its first full year of GeoApe profitability. US commercial revenue jumped 60% year over year. It's no longer just a defense contractor, it's a dual threat enterprise AI titan. That growth got it added to the S&P 500 in 2024. The ultimate badge of mainstream acceptance. Palantir isn't a tech startup anymore, it's infrastructure. Controversy in the code. Of course, when you deal in war, surveillance, and government power, things get murky fast. Palantir has faced sharp criticism over the years. Civil liberties groups have flagged its work with ICE on immigration raids. Predictive policing tools tested in New Orleans raised alarm bells about bias and transparency. And its NHS contracts in the UK drew fire from privacy advocates worried about patient data 
in a corporate black box. Even the vibe of the company fuels suspicion. For years, Palantir operated in total stealth. No customer lists, no press briefings, just whispers and NDAs. It created a mystique of elite power and deep state ties, which made it cool to some and terrifying to others. Their response? It's not the tech, it's how it's used. Palantir emphasizes oversight, audit logs, data governance. They say their tools enhance accountability, not erase it. And CEO Alex Karp insists he'd rather work with Western democracies than let authoritarian regimes dominate the AI battlefield. Still, the whole we help governments do controversial things but with better UX vibe, not exactly soothing. Palantir's defenders say it's not big brother, it's big data with rules. Its critics say same tools, same power, just with slicker branding. Truth, probably somewhere in between a new cold war powered by software Zoom out for a second. Palantir isn't just selling software, it's pitching a worldview, one where Western democracies need elite tech infrastructure to survive a global showdown over data, power, and AI. Forget startup fluff about making the world more connected. Palantir's pitch is, we help you win wars, digital and otherwise. That kind of clarity is rare in Silicon Valley, where most CEOs are allergic to controversy and high on utopia. Alex Karp is allergic to consensus and high on historical destiny. He believes the West must dominate the AI landscape, not just to win, but to stay free. In interviews, he often references Cold War analogies, talks about the Manhattan Project, and argues that tech companies have a patriotic duty to work with the state. Is that bold? Arrogant? Naive? Maybe all three, but it's working. Palantir has attracted top talent from inside the Pentagon, intelligence agencies, and elite universities. It's embedded itself in the supply chains of war, commerce, and crisis response. It's got the swagger of a startup and the clearance level of a four-star general. And while legacy defense giants are still pitching tanks and jets, Palantir is offering something far scarier, real-time digital omniscience. The tech company you'll never understand. So what is Palantir? It's a data analytics company, a surveillance software firm, a government contractor, a commercial AI platform, a meme stock, a cultural Rorschach test, a modern defense supplier, a Wall Street darling, and an ethics headache. It's building digital infrastructure for governments and corporations, the kind that doesn't just predict what's next, but actively shapes it. Whether that makes it the next Microsoft or the next Black Mirror episode, depends on your view of power, privacy, and the future of tech. But make no mistake, Palantir isn't going away, it's just getting started. So if you're wondering why this company keeps popping up in defense budgets, AI headlines, and Reddit threads, now you know Palantir is the tech empire that's quietly plugging into everything from the battlefield to the boardroom and reprogramming how decisions are made at the highest levels. Still think it's just another software company? Hit. Like, if your mind's been blown, subscribe for more breakdowns of tech's most powerful players and drop a comment. Is Palantir the future or a very shiny red flag? See you in the next one.